हे एवरी वन अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू माई सेल्फ नेहा गुप्ता यू मेंटर फॉर करंट अफेयर्स सो लेट्स बिगिन टू डेज क्लास आई होप गाइज यू आर अवेयर अबाउट द लाइव क्लासेस फॉर आर बी एस एबी एंड अबाउट एज वेल एज आर मोबाइल एप्लीकेशन सो लेट्स बिगिन विद दी क्वेश्चन इट सेल्फ सो विच आई आई टी इज द इम्प्लीमेंटिंग एजेंसी ऑफ द काशी तमिल संघ हियर द राइट आंसर इज ऑप्शन ए आई आई टी मद्रास नाउ बिफोर गोइंग टू द स्लाइड्स let me inform you what this event is what is the is uh, its implementing agency and what is the crux of it okay because then you will be in a better position to understand the entire news first of all this kashi tamil sangam is an event not at all an initiative or a scheme okay so it is basically a month long program that has been launched by the ministry of education Now what is the purpose? किस लिए लॉन्च किया गया है ये काशी संगम इनिशिएटिव और द इवेंट द बेसिक पर्पज इज टू फैसिलिटेट द एक्सचेंज ऑफ नॉलेज एंड कल्चर बिटवीन तमिलनाडु एंड वाराणसी ओके नाउ वाई आर दीज टू सिटीज इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज दीज टू सिटीज हैव वेरी यू कैन से एंशियंट सिग्निफिकेंस एज वेल एज दे वर द एंशियंट सेंटर्स ऑफ लर्निंग दैट इज वाई दीज टू सिटीज आर ऑफ Uh, you can say historical as well as cultural importance to India, and that is why these two cities have been chosen. One is the city, another one is the state. So these two places have been chosen so that the cultural, educational, learning, everything can be exchanged between the people so that they can understand each other's culture as well. Now I hope you are reminding something about. something from the cultural exchange between the two states. If you are reminding. of the ek bharat shreshth bharat scheme then i think that your preparation is going on the right path yes guys ek bharat shreshth bharat is the scheme under which two places or rather the two states are paired together and they share the cultural knowledge or the practices of themselves with the other state so that the people get can get closer that is the ek bharat shreshth bharat scheme so does this mean that this program has been launched under the ek bharat shreshth bharat now guys here i would say there is a contestation now nowhere in the news articles you would find that this ek program is being organized under the ek bharat shreshth bharat scheme had it been organized under that scheme first of all the implementing agency would be the ministry of culture but here what we are seeing the ministry of education is the implementing agency so that is a clear evidence that this initiative is not launched under the a bharat shreshth bharat scheme however since here we are pairing two places of india together so that they can uh, exchange their cultural knowledge therefore this is promoting the spirit of a bharat shreshth bharat scheme i hope you have understood it i know it's a bit tricky that i'm saying ki a bharat shreshth bharat ki spirit ko promote kar raha hai but ye uske andar launch nahi hua hai but that is the thing that is the you can say uh, the writing style of our government or the pib we cannot do anything about it so this news has been taken from the press information bureau and i have uh, searched a lot about it but i did not find anything else apart from this statement that it is supporting or promoting the spirit of ek bharat shreshth bharat okay now i hope this much is clear now it is a program simple program so there is nothing much to cram our minds into okay now the implementing agency of these program uh, this program is important so first agency is iit madras and another one is banaras hindu university ministry of education is the implementing agency the purpose i have already told you to celebrate reaffirm rediscover the age old links between tamil nadu and kashi as the two ancient centers of learning it will provide an opportunity for the people of the two regions to come together to share their knowledge culture and best practices and learn from each other and this way both the people both the states will come together okay who are the organizers first is ministry of education and it is collaborating with different ministries for this uh, initiative as well as the government of uttar pradesh because this kashi tamil sangam program is being launched in uttar pradesh it is being run in varanasi uttar pradesh okay the program is in sync with the national education policy of 2020 because it is emphasizing on the integration of indian knowledge system with the modern system of knowledge 
so i hope that you are aware of this vision of the present government or i would say the regime of the day that they want the ancient systems of our knowledge to be integrated with the modern system of knowledge and in my opinion there is no harm in that as well if we are trying to go back to our roots find out what we were and what we are now because in the ancient system of education or in our history we would find the scholars the mathematicians like brahma gupta aryabhatta and many others who have found many uh, i would say modern discoveries that are being credited by the west they are acclaimed by the west but in fact many of such uh, i would say discoveries were already there done by the indian scholars so if we are integrating the indian knowledge system with the modern system of knowledge then in my opinion it would be a better uh, idea okay the next question is which country has collaborated with international maritime organization for the imo green voyage 2050 okay so this is the question guys i am going to pause for a second on this question i will not discuss the question itself here i want to first discuss the news because when we discuss the news thoroughly then you will understand the significance of this question so let's jump on to the news the news is that the union minister of port shipping and waterways and the minister of ayush both of the ministries are being handled by one person sabananda sono so he has announced that they are going to launch a national center of excellence for green port and shipping now first of all this is an announcement therefore no location is yet known where will the center of excellence be established it is not known as of now what would be the purpose of the center of excellence so here from its name itself you can understand that it is for greening the shipping industry now what do we mean by greening the shipping industry greening the shipping industry means make it more sustainable and environment friendly by using the technologies that would help in reducing the emissions that is the basic idea okay now this center of excellence will innovate on the technologies will find out the technologies that are there in the world operating in the world and will use that to reduce emissions and make the shipping industry carbon free okay green in nature secondly it will develop a regulatory framework so that the shipping industry can be uh, made more sustainable so that's the basic idea okay now this announcement was made at an event called in marco 2022 in mumbai that is not a very significant fact now who are going to give contribution for the development of this national center of excellence for green ports and ship so deen dayal port authority paradeep port authority Chid uh, chidambara port authority thuddukodi and cochin shipyard limited these all organizations are going to help in creating this center of excellence and the knowledge partner would be the energy and resource institute now guys terry organizes a very crucial summit every year can any one of you name that summit in the comment section below this is your task coming back to the news this center will be established under the sagar mala program now i hope all of you are aware of the sagar mala program if you haven't covered this program thoroughly as of now so please do it after this video because now it is in the news so there are high chances you can expect a question out of this program even if your examination is in may next year okay even after that you can expect a question out of sagar mala because this is a static news sagar mala program in itself is a static government initiative so please cover now giving you an overview of this program the basic idea of this program was to develop the inland waterway routes so that we can use the river channels to navigate from one place to another both in terms of passengers and cargo okay as we have seen that recently india has launched ganga vilas which is the world's longest luxury river cruise service so what is it it is basically developing the inland waterway route for transportation right so such kinds of routes are being developed okay 
now on that note i would like to ask one thing that which organization has developed this kanga vilas river cruise because this is going to run from varanasi to dibrugar on the ganga river so the main question is that which organization has collaborated with inland waterways authority of india to develop this river cruise again a very simple question i have taught you this just one or two days back so give me the answer now the um, center of excellence is going to provide the information and innovation technology so that the uh, shipping routes can be uh, made more sustainable so these shipping routes would primarily be focused only on the inland waterways route because right now we are focusing on the sagar mala program now what is the ob objective of the national center of excellence for greening the ports and shipping the i have already told you that they want to uh, make the shipping routes green by fostering carbon neutrality means jitna carbon neutrality ka meaning kya hota hai jitna carbon release ho raha hai utna hi hamara environment absorb kar pa raha hai that means we are at net zero okay so that is the carbon neutrality then circular economy in the shipping industry now circular economy is that we are doing production we are doing consumption then we are uh, then consumption ke baad disposal and the disposed material is again used for production okay so that is the circular economy so basically we are generating no waste in this cycle okay so that's the basic idea that we want to make the shipping industry in such a manner that the ships which are which are disposed will be recycled and then it will be again consumed again disposed recycled again used okay so this would be the circular economy so do you know that which is the largest recycling port in india this is again your question to tell me again i have told you this was there in the news as well okay these are the five pillars on which this center of excellence is going to work first is the policy regulatory and research uh, area then it will also work on the human resource development the humans uh, who are involved in the shipping industry so their skills and everything will be developed and the framework for that will be developed by this center of excellence network key partners and strategic collabor uh, collaborators explore so this center will explore the area of work outcomes projects and resources and the fifth would be the uh, engagement past events upcoming events dissemination everything now is it important to learn not at all guys you can skip this entirely but what is important the important thing is that on how many pillars will this center of excellence work so it is going to work on five pillars 1 2 3 4 5 so these would be the five areas in which this center of excellence will focus upon and this can be a question nobody is going to ask you these things but five number is important so do remember that okay so here we have certain extra informations which are very very crucial what we have just learnt we have learnt about a national center of excellence for greening the ports and the shipping which is going to be set up by the government of india now we have one very important international declaration treaty agreement convention whatever you want to say so it is the clyde bank declaration which was adopted on um, during the cop26 last year at glasgow scotland okay so the cop26 of un f triple c was held in glasgow and recently the 27th edition of this has uh, has been conducted in egypt okay so during this 26th edition this clyde bank declaration was launched and the basic purpose of this declaration was to develop six oh, okay the number the number is written here six green corridors six shipping routes which would be green now what would it mean green shipping corridors green shipping corridors means that the ships which will travel from one port to another port through these routes will be uh, you can say will be eco friendly okay they would not pollute the marine ecosystem they would not emit uh, more carbon you can say beyond a limit okay so that is the meaning of green corridors so suppose this is 
the waterway channel here is mumbai and here we can say uh, you let's say gwadar port is here okay so every ship which is going to travel through it that ship needs to be eco friendly okay so that's the basic idea of developing a green corridor now how many corridors will be developed six do remember this number it is a very important number clyde bank declaration name of the initiative is also important now we have one more initiative at least actually i have two to three more but let's first discuss this so maritime vision document of 2030 this is an indian document indian vision document that aims to uh, create the maritime sector sustainable and a vibrant blue economy okay now we are talking about the blue economy i hope you are aware of this uh, samudrayaan what is this samudrayaan the deep ocean mission the basic idea of this is to go into the depths of the sea and research on the minerals okay now tell me the length up to which this samudrayaan uh, will go inside the ocean okay that is the basic i would say very important number from this scheme and again this scheme is important we have covered this as well and in your government scheme document also it is provided so cover it from there and provide me the answer the number or oh, sorry the length up to which this samudrayaan would go into so that it can research on the minerals okay now the next initiative is imo green voyage 2050 now here uh, is your question so from here i have made the question now what is this green voyage 2050 it is basically an initiative of international maritime organization and norway so both of these uh, came together in 2019 and launched this initiative the basic purpose of this initiative is to make the shipping industry green again everything we are discussing here is about the greening of shipping industry so that is all now india has been selected as a first country under the imo green voyage 2050 project uh, to conduct a pilot project related to the green shipping so this is a very important milestone so do remember okay the global partnership that is the green voyage 2050 partnership is supporting the developing countries the least developed countries the small island developing nations all of these are being supported so that they can adopt to the cleaner uh, cleaner technologies for their trade and everything which is going through the marine route okay now here now guys this is different from what we have read so far we have read about different initiatives we have read about the recent initiative now here we are going to read about the targets of india in relation to the renewable energy because ultimately when it comes to greening any kind of industry firstly the very basic resource for greening the industry is the energy right so what is the renewable energy target of india and how much of it have we achieved already so that is what we are going to discuss here so first india intends to increase the share of renewable energy to 60% of the total power demand of its major ports from a present share of less than 10% okay so that is the total target of india that we want to supply 60% of energy from the renewable side okay the ports have also aimed to reduce carbon emission per ton of cargo handled by 30% by 2030 now this is a very important uh, i would say statement and these statements guys have been directly picked from pib and i hope all of you are aware that from the pib direct statements are picked by the examiner and they ask you such stuff so in case if you encounter a question on this don't be surprised because now you are equipped i have taught you this okay so these ports are aiming to reduce the carbon emission per ton of cargo handled by 30% by 2030 so this is an important statement these two statements are really important because these are targets mentioned in pib now let's see how much india has achieved so india has already achieved more than 24.5% share 
of renewable energy in total installed capacity okay so out of the total installed capacity from where we are generating electricity almost 25 percent almost okay 24.5 percent to be more precise is the renewable energy capacity okay <coughs> globally india stands at the fourth position in the renewable energy capacity fourth in the wind power and fifth in the solar power capacity okay now on that note let me also inform you that the international solar alliance has a target of investing or mobilizing 1 trillion dollars into the solar energy by 2030 and guys this statement is there in the news every time i research anything on isa so please do remember this target of isa <coughs> Question number three is, where is Buddha, Buddha Banam, a first of its kind, Buddhist heritage theme park located? Okay, so I directly jumped on question number three. I did not tell you the answer of question number two. Forgive me for that, guys. Okay, so question number two. I hope you have got the answers. It's Norway, IMO, and now India is also a part of this. Okay, so Budhavanam, where is it? So it is at Nalgonda district. Now, where is the Nalgonda district? Tilapna. So it is a very simple news. And this is the very beautiful Budhavanam in Tilapna. <coughs> okay. Question number four, what is the GDP forecast for India for 2022 to 23 by RBI state of the economy report? So here guys, 7% is the right answer. First of all, RBI has released its state of the economy report in its bulletin November 2022, monthly bulletin of November 2022, wherein it has forecasted a 7% GDP forecast for India for 2022 to 2023. And this report is prepared by the Deputy G Governor of RBI, Michael Patra. So that much is enough. Don't need to go into depths. Next question is, what is the GDP forecast for India for the calendar year 2023 by Goldman Sachs? 5.9% <coughs> guys is the right answer. Okay, so Goldman Sachs has forecasted 5.9% for 2023 and 2022 GDP forecast is 6.9%. 8.7% is for 2021 to 2022. Uh, okay, just give me a second guys. Okay, so the next question is, which award has been conferred upon the 14th Dalai Lama by India in 2022? So here guys, the right answer is Gandhi Mandela Award. First of all, what are the things that you need to learn from this news? First is that the 14th Dalai Lama has been given this award. Secondly, the Gandhi Mandela Foundation gives this award and it is based in New Delhi and that much is enough. Okay, everything else is just written for your information. Apart from this, you don't have to mug up anything apart from these two keywords. And guys, this is the news when Pr Prime Minister greeted Dalai Lama on his birth anniversary. Uh, and all this thing created a very big controversy with China getting threatened and giving threats and all. So that all happened. If you are interested and curious about this, you can search for it more. But there is nothing much about it. It's just that we, now India is taking bold steps. India is, uh, I would say, not hesitant in stating what it thinks, okay, and what it wants for its interest. In my opinion, that's a very good stance. Okay, the next question is how many schools have been given the Swachh Vidyalaya Puraskar in 2021 to 2022? So guys, 39 schools have been given this Swachh Vidyalaya Puraskar. 
Now, what is this Puraskar? First of all, Swach Vidyalaya Puraskar is basically given under the Swach Vidyalaya Initiative, which was launched in 2014. Now, Swach Vidyalaya Initiative basically aims to give <coughs> awards to the schools who have performed well in Swachitha, in water, hygiene and sanitation. So, that's the basic. Now, coming to this news, 39 schools have been given the award and out of these 39, 34 schools have won the award in the overall category with a prize of 60,000 rupees and 5 schools have won the um, award in the subcategories with a prize money of 20,000. Okay. Now, what are the categories and subcategories of these awards? That is not at all important from the exam point of view. Because first of all, your exam is not approaching as of now. You don't have examination next day or next month. Okay. Secondly, the categories have not been important uh, so far because they have not been asked. Okay. So, just let it here. Okay. So, I have told you that the... Swach Vidyalaya Initiative was launched in 2014 and the Puraskar in 2016-17. to 17. <coughs> Department of School Education and Literacy under the Ministry of Education implements this initiative and gives this pro, um, Puraskar. UNICEF is the technical partner <coughs> of the Ministry of Education in this program. Okay, and uh, it basically honors the schools who have done excellent work in water sanitation and hygiene and remember that this year is the third edition of this up so these are all factual data there is nothing to explain in it that's why i'm just highlighting the main important words okay so the next question is who has become the first female to win a bronze medal at the ITTF attu asian cup First of all, what is this ITTF, International Ten Table Tennis Federation, ATTU is Asian Table Tennis Union. So they have conducted or organized the Asian Cup and here Manika Batra has become the first Indian female to win a bronze medal. And that is important only from this Asian Cup because the winners of the men's singles and women's singles are not important. They do not belong to our country and they are, I would say, not very important from the examinations perspective. That's why I have skipped that. Now, the important thing is right in front of you, Manika Batra. Okay, so which sport does she belong to? Table tennis. That can be also asked. Who has been appointed as the brand ambassador of Real 11? Kuldeep Yadav. Okay, so Real 11 is a, a sports sports. Uh, Fantasy sports firm, so it has appointed Kuldeep Yadav. Who has been appointed as the election commissioner of India in November 2022? So here, guys, Arun Goyal is the title. So yesterday only I taught you about the Voice International, which is the magazine released by the election commissioner of India, election commission of India. And now we are seeing the appointment of Arun Goyal as the election commissioner. Okay, Anup Chandra Pandey is another election commissioner and Rajiv Kumar is the chief election commissioner of India. So do remember these things. Now tell me what was the theme of Voice International is this year. Okay. On that note, I would like to conclude the session. Thank you so much guys for watching this video.